Rob here at eTrailer.com and today you're going to be taking a look at the Kurt Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2008 Toyota RAV4. Now here's what our hitch is going to look like once we have it installed. The cross tube is going to sit right below the bumper and it is going to be visible, but the main thing we're going to see is that receiver tube sticking out. Now since it's Class 3, it's going to give us that 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening and it's going to have the widest variety of options when it comes to accessories that we can mount up. If we need to make some room on the inside, we can mount a cargo carrier, put all that gear on the outside of our vehicle, make some room for passengers or pets, or if we want to take a bike ride, we could put a bike rack in here, that way we can hit the trail. Or if we have a trailer, we need to move something, a utility trailer, or anything like that, we can put a ball mount in and make it really easy to hook up. But regardless of how we're going to be using our hitch, all of our accessories are going to mount to the hitch pin hole here on the side. Now our hitch is going to accept a standard 5 ace pin and clip. Now these are not included with the hitch, but you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices to make sure your accessories are secure. Now our safety chain connection point is going to be a loop style welded on the bottom. And as you can see, even with some of the smaller size hooks, we have plenty of room to get them hooked on or take them off. Now if you're looking for a hitch, you want to make sure that it's going to be up to the task you put it to, whether it's going to be for a recreational purpose like a cargo carrier or a bike rack, or if you are going to be pulling a trailer. So as far as the weight ratings go, our hitch is going to have a 525 pound tongue weight. This will be the maximum downward force at the end of the receiver tube, and that'll be plenty for those larger cargo carriers to really maximize the carrying capacity, or carry a large bike rack, maybe even up to four or five bikes. Now as far as the gross trailer rating goes, our hitch is going to have a 3,500 pound rating. That's how much it can pull, including the trailer and everything you have loaded on it. Now it is designed to work with weight distribution systems as well, and that's going to be a separate component that's mounted on your trailer, and your tongue weight's going to stay the same, but it will bump your gross trailer weight rating up to 4,000 pounds. But with all those numbers in mind, you do want to double check your RAV4's owner's manual because you don't want to exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. Now you can see that we have our spare tire carrier on the back. Some of the RAV4's do have them underneath. But the only time it's really going to be a factor is when we're looking at folding accessories to make sure we have enough room here that when they're put up in the folding position, they're not going to come in contact with the tire. So I'd like to give you a few measurements. And these measurements are going to help you whether you're looking for a ball mount, a bike rack, or a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our tires, we write about six inches. And again, that measurement is going to help you with those folding accessories to make sure you have adequate room and they're not going to come in contact with the spare tire. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to write about 13 and 3 quarter inches. That measurement is not only going to help you when you're looking for a ball mount to help you find the appropriate riser drop to match up to your trailer, but at that height, I would also recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier with a raised shank. That way we get a little bit more ground clearance out of it. But now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's get it installed together. To begin our installation, we're going to come to the back of our RAV4 and we're going to start over on the driver's side. Here we'll find our tie down hook at the bottom of the frame. We need to pull that out. We're gonna have two bolts on the bottom here that are holding it in place. So we're gonna grab a 17 millimeter socket and we'll pull those two bolts out. And once you have it removed, we'll set this aside along with the bolts because this is not gonna get reinstalled. Now with our tie down hook out of the way, if we look at the bottom of the frame here, we'll go over our mounting points. The furthest back hole towards the back of the bumper where our tie down hook was mounted will have a weld nut. That's going to be one. And if we move forward, we'll skip the next one and we'll find another threaded hole in front of that. Now, since it has a little bit of dirt and debris in there, I'm going to take some spray lubricant and spray it inside. I'm going to come back with a nylon tube brush, clean it out, and make sure all that dirt, debris, and rust is cleaned out, and making sure our bolts aren't going to cross thread. Now, if your, if your weld nuts are extremely dirty, you may want to get a tap. That way you can run a tap in and out and clean all the threads, make sure they don't mess up when we put our bolts in. So we're going to clean both holes on this side, and we're going to have the same holes on the other side of the frame as well. And once you have all your weld nuts clean, we're going to lower our exhaust down so we have a little bit of room up here on the frame. Before we lower it down, I am going to put a support strap up so it doesn't come down too far and cause any damage. Tighten up the strap so once we do lower it, it doesn't come down too far. But if we look at the back of the muffler here, we're going to have one of our exhaust hangers. 
just going to spray it down with some spray lubricant, make it easier to slide off. And then you just want to take a pry bar or whatever you have available, and we just want to slide that rubber isolator off the hanger just like that. Now if it doesn't come down far enough, we can move back. We follow our exhaust pipe, we'll have another one right here, right before the rear axle. Spray that one down as well. Slide it off the hanger. Now over here on the passenger side, we're gonna have those same two weld nuts. And I'd like to go over the combination of hardware with you. First, we're gonna have a new M10 bolt. We'll have a conical tooth washer. I'm gonna slide the washer over the bolt, but you wanna make sure that those teeth are facing up towards the hitch or towards the bottom of the frame. Now I like to go through, double check that my weld nuts are clean and then my bolt thread in easily by hand and they're not gonna cross thread. So I'm gonna go through and make sure that each one of them thread in easily on both sides of the frame. Now the next set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch up. We're gonna go over the muffler and we'll line up our weld nuts with the holes in the frame. We're gonna get at least one bolt hand tight on each side so the hitch will support itself. Then we're going to use that same combination of hardware for all the remaining holes. I'm going to come back with a 19 millimeter socket and snug up all my hardware. Then you want to make sure you grab a torque wrench and torque all your hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. Make sure you go back and repeat that for all your remaining hardware. I'm going to spray a little bit more lubricant on that hanger, just make it easier to slide back onto the rubber isolator. And finally, we'll remove our support strap from the exhaust from earlier, and that'll finish up your installation and your look at the Kurt Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2008 Toyota RAV4.